Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and with the introduction of iOS 18, Apple promised an all new mail app. We have yet to see this, but we're getting more hints that they're going to be implementing this very, very soon. Now we don't know exactly when just yet, but they had a new announcement about that today to go along with businesses. And also many of you have asked me to talk about the new iPad mini launch. So we'll talk about some details you may not be familiar with about this a little bit later. Now, the first thing is Apple today announced a new business feature coming soon to iOS 18. It has to do with the new mail app and the new mail app should have things such as categorization. We'll also be able to get right to what matters most with sort of a redesigned inbox and also have messages grouped for scanning. One thing you may have already noticed is there's different icons here, many different mail apps already that exist, whether that's Edison mail or spark or maybe air mail and other third party apps typically do this based off a website. However, according to Apple, you'll be able to put this sort of logo that you want there with their new business connect system. So if we go over to their website today, they actually announced on their Apple newsroom that they're expanding to help businesses connect with customers. There's a couple different examples here. And if we scroll down, you'll see that of course you can set up where you're located and things like that. We've always had that, but we have new features that allow for your own logo. So there's new features in business connect that allow for things such as your own icon to show in mail. And this is actually coming later this year. We know this from iOS 18's website, and now they're saying later this year. So probably with iOS 18.2, since iOS 18.1 doesn't have it. However, we have yet to see the final version of that. So we very much could get the mail app incorporated, but it looks like it could be coming a little bit later. Typically Apple does not work past about December 15th or so. So probably before then we'll see this feature release. Now they'll actually be able to have their own logo here and not only in mail, but also their own logo if they're using Apple tap to pay. So if you're using your iPhone to accept payments or pay others, you could have your logo there just to let people know that it's you and sort of have a polished look to whatever you're doing. If we scroll back up, Apple actually has said that something coming next year, maybe with iOS 18.4, we don't really know the version is the ability to have the same thing with caller ID. So you'll see their example here is Walgreens and they have the logo here next to it. So people using maybe a small business or a large business, whether it's Apple calling you, they can have their logo or a small business that's local to you can sign up for this. And then again, have their own logo here. So business caller ID will allow for businesses to show their name and logo and even their department. So you'll see it says customer service. So if you're in a specific department, you can have that department show directly to people you're calling. So it will give more information and maybe they're less likely to not take the call or let it go to voicemail. It's pretty easy to sign up as well. We can go to their website. You'll see business connect. You can sign up, watch a film about it and simply sign up to create different things such as business information, map locations, and all of those other things that are coming very, very soon. So those are great features. I think that are coming soon. Now, as far as when Apple's going to update iOS 18 with mail, they just say coming later this year. If I had to guess, I'd say it's with iOS 18.2. Maybe it will be a surprise for iOS 18.1 with the release candidate version, but at this time we don't know hundred percent. Now, yesterday, Apple updated the iPad mini. It's bringing Apple intelligence and some small updates, but significant ones. So not only does it get a spec bump, but there's some other significant things to mention. Apple actually calls it iPad mini a 17 pro, not the seventh gen. So if we go to maybe compare this with something else, if we go to the iPad section, so we'll go to Apple. Then we'll compare this within the comparison options. If we go to select the iPad, we want, you'll see iPad mini a 17 pro they're no longer calling it the sixth or seventh generation. So you'll see here, if we scroll down to mini, we have the sixth generation, but for whatever reason, they're calling it a 17 pro. It's a bit confusing. Maybe they should just call it iPad mini seven. We don't really know, but either way, it looks like they're doing that again by changing the name. Now, when it comes to the iPad itself, well, it's the same price at 499, but with bumped up storage specs. So now it starts at 128, goes to 256 or 512. We have four color options. So blue, purple, starlight, like this one or space gray. And it also comes with the a 17 pro with Apple intelligence, the same a 17 pro that's in the iPhone 15 pro and 15 pro max, but with one less GPU core or basically a little bit less power on the GPU side, but six core CPU. However, if you compare the overall resolutions, 
and this Apple pencil doesn't want to stay, but the overall resolutions of the display between the iPhone 15 pro and the new iPad mini are basically the same. Although the 15 pro is technically a little bit more. So based off of that, maybe it just doesn't need it for the power of the display. So we'll check the overall Geekbench scores and how it performs once it's released. Now it does have the same display. So 8.3 inches, 500 nits, P3 wide color. However, they've changed the Apple pencil support. So it currently supports the USB-C Apple pencil, or basically you'll need the USB-C Apple pencil on the new one. Or if you want the more advanced pencil, you can use the Apple pencil pro. You cannot use the Apple pencil second generation. So you'll have to buy a new Apple pencil if you don't have one. So you can either use the USB-C version here or the Apple pencil pro. Other than that, you won't be able to use it. Another small detail is on the back of the new iPad mini. Instead of just saying iPad, like the current generation, the new seventh generation or a 17 pro version actually says iPad mini. So that sets it apart just a little bit. Externally, it will be basically the same. However, the wireless charging pad for pairing may change a little bit and around the outside edge, you'll still have touch ID, the same sort of overall layout. But one thing that has changed is if you get the cellular model, there is no SIM card anymore. It's just eSIM only. So this is something we were seeing actually more and more with Apple. I would like to see the physical SIM card come back, but it looks like they're moving away from that. It does, however, have Wi-Fi 6E support, but not Wi-Fi 7, and it supports Bluetooth 5.3. Those are both spec bumps over the previous generation. Everything other than that is basically the same, the same 10 hour battery life, the same cameras. So the same rear camera and front camera and everything else is the same. One thing I would like to know is if the same cases will work with it. So if you have one already, maybe from a previous iPad mini and you want to use it with it. I'm not sure if we'll be able to use it, but I'll definitely check it out if I can. So I'll let you know, of course, once it's released, if this one works with the latest generation, but on the exterior of the iPad, they basically look the same, the same large bezels, but you do need some place to hold on to it. So it doesn't block the display. And it's some people's favorite form factor. I've never been a huge fan of it. I like the larger 13 inch, but either way, if you need it for maybe reading books or something else, it's definitely more easy to hold on to. And it has the same 10 hour battery life. Unfortunately, you won't be able to load things such as Final Cut Pro, even though that would be difficult to see, it would be nice to have that option to use with Apple Pencil Pro and other things, but other apps that you've been using Procreate and other things should work just fine. So those are all the details about it. Of course, once I get my hands on it, we'll try it out a little bit more, see what it's capable of, see if it will work with an external display well, and we don't have keyboards such as the magic keyboard, but of course we could pair a Bluetooth keyboard with it. So let me know if there's anything specifically you want to know about the new iPad mini, and I'll try my best to sort of compare them or test them out as soon as it's released. It does release on the 23rd. So next Tuesday or so we'll be able to get our hands on one and try it out. It's currently available for pre-order on their website. So if we go back here, you'll see 1023 and you can pre-order it now. It's still available to pick up in the store or for delivery as well. The one thing I am curious about is how much Ram it actually has since it's utilizing Apple intelligence, I would expect eight gigabytes, but we don't really know until we check it out ourselves. So hopefully we get some of those specs very soon, or if any of you know, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.